ओम भूरभुव स्वेत सवितोरवरेणियम भर्गो देवासम धियो यो नचोदया ओम शांति 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 नमस्कार माय डियर फ्रेंड्स दिस इज वीडियो नंबर थ्री ऑन द लाइफ बियॉन्ड फिजिकल डेथ दिस इज वीडियो नंबर थ्री दिस स्टार्ट्स विद चैप्टर नंबर फोर द हेवन एज कॉमिटल ऑफ सिंस रिजल्ट्स इन हेल सो आर virtues regarded as heaven what should be regarded as a sin and what as virtue the issue is complex it has been dealt with in another book by the author for the time being it is sufficient to understand that deeds performed with a feeling of love towards other beings and purity of heart are virtues and those with selfish motives and hypocrisy sins human mind may endeavor to define and justify sins and virtues according to one's convenience but the inner self identifies them without any ambiguity a dumb person may not be able to describe the taste of sweet and so but he does know what it is acts of virtue instantaneously provide peace and contentment to the soul on the contrary sinful acts create turbulence in mind though religious rituals are somewhat helpful in providing purity to mind they themselves do not constitute religion blowing a conch ringing a bell lighting incense sticks and candles are not part of religion such rituals only purify the mind to some extent if the mind of a person is so corrupt that he or she compulsively dwells on evil no ritual can take him to heaven only the ignorant ones believe that the rituals are a means to go to heaven virtues like kindness love benevolence and truthfulness are components of all religions only those traits which provide contentment to the soul could be regarded as virtues and are the exclusive means for entering the gates of heaven believing in superstitions tend to amount to groping in the dark as we misuse our time in so many futile activities during life so we do in observing the many so called traditions it is a total waste of time for the other world acts of virtue provide us happiness within this happiness unfolds in the heaven in the same way as the sins do in hell the way our concepts of hell beyond life are perceived in the astral world so are those relating to heaven a hindu finds his heaven conforming to the vaikuntha and in the lok of his scriptures the muslim as jannat of gilmas and so on and so forth it is because heaven and hell are only conceptual projections of our points of view in this life in the life beyond death the pleasure of heaven also last a particular duration the objective of heavenly bliss is to upgrade the virtues imbibed in the soul so that in the next life becoming more activated and invigorated the being is able to interact with a much more subtle sphere of existence adhik sukshma unaware of this truth the ignorant think that heaven is full of means and materials of sensual enjoyment this is not true only those individuals deserve experience of heaven who had already achieved total contentment of sensual gratification in material life 
for the slaves of sensuality and leeches of lust, heaven remains a far cry. Had heaven stood for abundance of wine, beautiful women and sex, which belong to material world only, there would not have been any necessity for the aspirants to perform so much penance and austerity. The Pascharya. All of it would have been achievable anywhere in this world in lieu of man money. As a matter of fact, heavenly bliss does not mean material happiness or sensual pleasures. On the other hand, it is the extrasensory happiness felt by the inner self. The pleasure experienced in this way is of a much higher order than that of felt by the human body in this world. Scholars, pundits of science of spirituality are aware of the infinite power of the soul. Being a component of the omnipotent God, it is competent and self-sufficient in every respect. There is no reason for disbelieving or considering it incredible that soul can create a heaven or hell as it wills. The scriptures mention that in the beginning God who was the only being existing at the moment willed to create the cosmos by transforming his existence as the only existence into a multitude. Eko hum bahu salam and thus he became omnipotent, present as the innumerable animate and inanimate beings of cosmos. In this world itself, the soul creates for its own, own self three states of wakefulness, sleep, dream, dreaminess and subconsciousness, jagrat, swapna and shashupti. Similarly, it creates hell and heaven, falls in bondage and delivers itself from the same by its own endeavor. So great is the power of soul. Preparation for rebirth. Chapter 5 Preparation for Rebirth As mentioned earlier in the astral world, the initial one-third duration of stay is spent in resting, recuperation, the succeeding one-third in going through the experiences of hell and heaven, and the remaining in making preparation for the next birth in the material world. After the perceptions of hell and heaven, the being feels particularly encouraged to make a fresh beginning in the next life. The punishment in hell wipes out earlier serious sins, but stubborn habits persist. In parlance of spirituality, the hardened traits which are carried forward by the soul in the next birth are known as sanskars. The sanskars remain integrally attached to the soul till the being identifies them by virtue of enlightenment and struggles hard to get rid of them. It is the sanskars which are responsible for the boundaries of soul to the cycles of life and death and consequent good and bad experiences. God has provided absolute freedom of action to the human being. It weaves the cobweb of sanskars around its soul out of its own free will and remains entombed therein. Mala, the inability to perceive the world in its true perspective is only a synonym for synonym synonym for ignorance. Why does an individual make one's own self unhappy by getting entangled in a self-created boundaries of ignorance is an enigma. This complex phenomenon itself is described as the 
insurmountable boundaries of maya in parlance, parlance of spirituality. The sanskars accumulated in previous cycles of life and death are not totally wiped out even after making penance for the evil deeds in the other world. As a habitual gambler desires to bet again and again after losing a number of times, or an addict craves for the drug in spite of repeated suffering, the being looks for a place to be born again because of old habits. An average person generally looks for a familiar socio-geographical environment of previous life. For instance, a farmer in this life who has accumulated sanskars related to farming would like to take up the same profession in the next birth. Instead of becoming a businessman, let us not assume that some alien super being compels the soul to take rebirth as a person in a particular environment. Man, by virtue of his own sanskars, is motivated to be born at a place of his choice, like a vulture flying high in the sky looking for a carcass. The soul searches an environment of its liking in the immense space around the world. As mentioned earlier, since the intellectual faculty, buddhi of the material world which uses logic and arguments does not exist in the astral world. The soul does not manipulate for a better worldly status in the next birth which does not conform to its habit of previous life. As a small child used to living in a poor family prefers to live in a hutment rather than a palace, an individual accustomed to the sanskars of a business environment likes to be born in a family of businessmen. More or less 50% individuals prefer to be born in their arrest while household or family, unless insulted, accused or ostracized. The being desired to take birth in the same house, family and community or its neighborhood where it was living in the earlier life. The same holds true about the geographical preferencing since the language, customs and culture have a deep imprint on the psyche. All beings with very few exceptions prefer to live in the state where they had been living in the previous life. Thus, unless there is some specific reason, an Italian would not like to settle in India, nor would an Indian in Turkey. Our physical senses find it difficult to identify the psychological environment or the state of psyche of an individual, but the beings of the astral world can do so very easily. They wander around the family where the environment appears co-genial. The beings of the astral world also have recollections of their earlier life cycles and because of previous attachments to people and places they are instinctively attracted towards them. At times because of a long passage of time the attitude of soul towards the previous environment undergoes a change or on the other hand the environment of the arrest while family itself changes. In such an anomalous situations too, the soul at times takes rebirth in the same family. Birth of an idiot in a clan of scholars or a saint amongst sinners is thus indicative of one of the following situations. Number one, either while passing through several cycles of life and death, there have been some change in the environment of the family while the soul continues to retain the old sanskars. Or number two, the soul has molded itself <coughs> into different frames of sanskars. 
but it is attracted towards the sad family because of personal attachments. It has been repeatedly asserted that each being has the freedom to change its sanskars by changing its behavior character. Hence, if a child born in a family has a different nature, it indicates either some change in the ancestral traits of the soul or an old attachment of the soul for the family because of which it gets into the incongruous association. Having located a family of its liking, the soul hovers around it waiting for an opportunity to enter the material world. When a woman therein becomes pregnant, it makes an entry into the womb and after nine months forces its way out to the external world as a newborn baby. Many experts are of the view that the soul reserves the embryo beforehand and permanently enters the body of the child when it is about to be released from the womb. In my view, when the sperm and ovum ovum fertilize, the soul takes charge soon thereafter and begins to live in the embryo lodged in the womb. There is a general misconception that living in the narrow confines of the womb is a very painful experience for the unborn child. It is not true since the un underdeveloped brain sense organs hardly inhibit the freedom of spatial movement of the soul since at the stage it does not have any particular attachment to the body. By virtue of its faculty of animation, chetna, it is able to wander around the around beyond the body using the womb as its nest. However, a little before the moment of birth, when the sense organs of the child acquire maturity, the being loses its freedom and immediately tries to force its way out along with the body of the newborn. This is the period of spasms during the delivery, Parsava call. At times there are a number of beings intending to take birth in the same family. <coughs> in such a case they have to await their turn. In spite of the intention to enter the womb of a particular woman, if it is not its soul's turn or if the woman is not in a position to conceive a stop, the arrangement is sought and the being has to choose an alternative place for rebirth. At times a soul keeps on waiting for a very long period for an opportunity to be born in a particular family. If such an opportune moment does not arise and the specified period of stay in the astral world expires, it hastens to take rebirth at some place or the other. As a strong urge to vomit forces one to discharge instantaneously at an inappropriate place, so does the being hurries to accept an unintended environment on expiry of his tenure in astral world. The soul has no control over formation of internal and external organs of the body of the embryo. The new body is a joint venture of the genes of the parents and requirements of the being. For example, a desired piece of pottery is produced by the efforts of an expert potter and proper raw material. The sperm and the womb may be compared to the raw material and the soul with the potter. An, art, an art, artless potter cannot produce a good piece even with excellent material. On the other hand, effort of an expert potter is wasted if the material is not good. A soul having superior sanskars exerts positive influence on the physical characteristics of sperm and ohm, whereas the one with bad sanskars contaminates the good character, characteristics of sperm and ohm. The quality of thoughts of parents and their character, 
Bhavna and Charitra to affect the development of embryo. Unless highly evolved, the being is compelled to live under the influence of inferior sanskars of the parents. It is seen that a child born of adultery is often troublesome since during the coitus the parents are full of anxiety which leaves an impression on the fertilizing embryo. Some individuals become firmly addicted to bad habits and misuse a particular sense organ again and again. For this reason, they are repeatedly required to go through the treatment of a hell in successive life cycles. On the account of strong habits, however, they forget this punishment and revert back to the old practice. Such individuals are ultimately deprived of misappropriated sense organs for a number of succeeding cycles of life. This system created by the Supreme Being works to reform the compulsive sinners and is akin to temporary debarment of a person from membership of an organization or cancellation of license issued for a firearm. Cogenital aberrations such as deafness, dumbness, blindness, deformities of limb, absence or underdeveloped of genitalia, mental retardation are given to such individuals who have become habituated to misutilization of the particular organ of sense gratification. However, the life on this earth as a human is never meant to make the being reap fruits of good and bad deeds of previous life. The soul of even the handicapped person is healthy and active, jagrat like others and give the person freedom to strive for enlightenment if the individual so desire. Then there are very wicked individuals misappropriating all sense organs throughout their life. They are made to take birth in the biological kingdom as an immobile being, Jad Yoni. Thus the plant life belongs to the species Yoni in which the being is made to suffer for the sins committed in earlier life. It is known as Bhog Yoni. In the Bhog Yoni, though the life exists, most of the animation pertaining to physical activity, Kriya, Seal Chaitana is confiscated, placing the soul in this Jadiyoni plant life too is indicative of benevolence of God since the since otherwise the degraded individual would find it difficult to discard the compulsive bad habits and the retrogressive sanskars. From this state again begins progressive evolution of the soul, gradually passing through numerous cycles of life and death as bacteria, worms, animals, birds, and so on and so forth, it successively moves to higher levels of enlightenment. This phenomena is corroborated by Darwin's theory of evolution. According to Hindu scriptures, the number of such yonis is 8.4 million, whereas material scientists would consider the number to be much larger. Notwithstanding the number of yonis, the fact remains that wicked beings who misuse their senses take birth in a jad yoni and in order to be born again as a human being have to undergo progressive evolution for millions of years. If there is some interruption in the process of evolution, the being is made to appear in a particular yoni again and again till it qualifies for the next grade, like a failed student. However, only extremely wicked persons are awarded Jadiyoni, an average individual committing small acts of
of sins and virtues take birth again as a human being since the wisdom accumulated in course of millions of years of living in numerous species is not so insignificant as to be overlooked reverting the being to the arduous process of evolution man is again and again provided an opportunity for self evolution in order to achieve the ultimate objective of deliverance from the bondage of life and death i conclude this video here please like comment and share the video and subscribe the channel namaskar my dear friend next video number 4 we'll start with chapter number 6 ghosts and spirits